Viewer discretion is advised. <clears throat> I, I'm not going to read the whole thing. I highlighted stuff, so. What is meditation for? What is meditation? What is it for? It's a very long answer, so I'll come back to that at the end. Did you say? <laughs> okay. Here's what I got. How to meditate. Okay. How do you meditate? The short answer is there's no right or wrong way. Not really. Um, but I'll tell you how I learned to do it. And then we'll go from there. So, if, first of all, if you're listening to music or if you're listening to a track and they have like guided meditation and they talk to you, do that, of course. Follow what they say. There's nothing wrong with that. So if, if, if we say, this is how you're supposed to meditate, and they say, do something different, it's like, well, they, they must be wrong. No, it's okay. It's okay. Do what they say. So turn off the lights, close the blinds, remove distractions, light a candle. You can do that, Nico, if you want. Uh, both of them or just one of them? All three of them. Sorry, three. Oh, I thought you were talking about candle. Candle. <laughs> do you know what candle means? Yeah. Uh, light an incense. Your, you could do that too. You will burn your finger like this. Probably. <laughs> oh, you're failing. <laughs> this is how you light a candle like that, okay? Okay. And the incense once you're done that. The candle is for ambiance or something to focus on, to look at. What? Oh, where's my bowl? The metal one right there beside you. Is it? Oh, yeah. I'll get to that, too. Probably one is good. One is enough. Especially if you're sensitive. Is anyone sensitive to incense? No. Robert, you should. Robert triggered my allergies. I'm not sure. We'll see. Okay. <laughs> Robert starts sneezing as soon as he gets it within 20 feet of him. So I am in sensitive to incense. <laughs> You're a fun guy. <laughs> the magic type for... <laughs> yes. That joke, that joke wasn't even punny. Ha ha ha. That works for girls too. You just say she's a really fun gal. Fungal. Fungal? Ah, uh, what did I leave off? Um, yes, play meditative music. Start a timer for about 15 minutes. Sit on the floor with your legs crossed. You back straight, much like he's doing. Um, if this is the first time you've ever meditated or you don't have much experience, then like the uh, the, the cross-legged Indian thing, and uh, I'll do it too, just so you can see. I think I got my phone in my pocket. Did I mute mine? Probably not. Do 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 do. No, not yet. Not yet. I'm just going over, I did not mute mine, look at that, that's being a hypocrite. So yeah, I don't really need to look at the notes. So the way I learned it was, sit nice and straight, your back has to be straight, not like this, you know, and um, it doesn't matter what order you do these in, but they say to do this, it's not that important because of the Kuji thing. And once you do this, they say to make big circles and then you go smaller and smaller, trying to find the exact center of your spine. At first, once you get used to it, you don't have to do this every time. And then you're like, okay, I think that's the middle right there. Right there. So you just sit along and, and it's supposed to help with the flow, the energy. I'm not sure if I believe in chakras and all that stuff. It might. I don't know. So I'm not saying that I do agree with that. It's just, I know that key, people talk about key and we talk about key, but some people think key is magic or supernatural. And I think it's just the electrical impulses of your nerves, right? So it's not all the chakras are or just the basically, the yeah, the like nodes. nodes for yeah, could be. Yeah. Actually the magnetic fields. That's part of it too. Yeah. Electricity does have magnetic fields. Electricity in your body creates yeah. a magnetic field, which can interfere with magnetic fields created by everything around you. Yep. Uh, okay, so the breathing now. 
When you're breathing, you should breathe down into your belly because a lot of people, when they breathe, they breathe in their upper chest and their, their rib cage moves or their sternum moves like that. You don't want that to move. So you want to be low, inhale and exhale. So this moves and your ribs don't because you don't want your bones to move. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And at least breathe in through your nose and you can breathe out through your nose or your mouth. Nice deep breaths. And if you're not used to it, they say, or my teacher told me to count to nine, nine breaths. And then once you get to nine, that's one set of nine. So you count to nine, nine times. And you can count out loud or you can count to yourself. And if you forget where you left off, just guess and keep going. <laughs> and you don't have to do that every single time, only if you're new, then you can get rid of that. Not bother with the counting anymore. Um, besides that, Focusing your attention, yeah. So, your mind's eye, there's a black canvas behind your eyelids, so you're looking into your eyelids, or don't focus on your eyelids, focus out, out in front of you as if you're looking into the darkness. And they say the, human, the average human has 60,000 thoughts per day. So our minds are designed to wander a lot. So, try to focus on nothingness, blank zero in the darkness and if you start to think of things and you catch yourself thinking of things it's okay it's not a big deal just bring it back to zero to recenter and say okay i can't think of that but don't get upset or angry because damn it i screwed up you know nothing like that so you just focus on your the inside things you can do to improve your situation to make it better or when you think you're ready you can use things like tibetan singing bowls for instance. Headphones, because a lot of the meditation music uses stereo effect, and we'll get into that. If there's noise that you cannot tune out, accept it. If you live in a New York along a subway track and the subway is a problem, just accept it. Don't, don't get angry with it or force it out or try to it's all part of it. Or, you know, cars on the street outside, things like that. Just accept, accept all the noise. If you have kids upstairs banging on the floor, not a big deal. Just like when I, we used to, we always sleep with the windows open in the summertime and you could always hear birds early in the morning. Oh, I hated those birds. Holy crap. I hated them. And I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to accept it. It's part of nature. After that, it never bothered me again. It's, it's funny how that works. Yes, headphones is very important. I always use headphones. A blindfold, maybe, if it's too bright. Uh, your timer, everyone says something different. You'll hear, I watched a video where a monk, Buddhist monk, said five minutes is good for meditation. I've heard people say 30 minutes. And it doesn't matter, really. They say about 15 minutes is probably, but it doesn't matter. You can deviate. It's not a big deal. Another thing, if you have bad hips, or if sitting like this is bad, you can sit on a cushion. Or what's even better is to get a really thick book and then put the cushion on it so it lifts up your pelvis and tilts your, tilts your knees down. And that'll relieve stress on your back. Uh, you can sit in a corner, actual corner. So now you're, when you do it, your shoulders will hit each corner and you don't have to do this thing anymore because now you're autom automatically centered, right? You don't have to don't have to do that step anymore. I actually hate sitting like this when I meditate. I hate it. But I'm just telling you what I've been taught. So uh, You can sit in a chair or a lazy boy or you can lay down. I lay down. I prefer to lay down. Just don't fall asleep. If you fall asleep it defeats the purpose. But if you're in bed at night and you put meditation music on to help you fall asleep, that's different. You can by all means of course go to sleep. When you're ready, you can stop counting your breaths if you're really, uh, if you're anchored to this and it helps you to meditate, but you find your fingers come apart and that's a problem. It shouldn't be a problem, but if it is, you can add tape, elastics, maybe. I, I tend to put my hands in my pockets when I'm laying out straight and they stay together. But if they come apart, it's not magic. Nothing's going to happen. Don't worry about it. <laughs> you get stuck there for eternity. Yeah. Uh, let's see. What else? There's various types of meditation, but they're very similar. 
Some people think that their spirituality plays a part or out-of-body experiences. Some people call them astral projection or traveling to spirit worlds or communicating with the dead, but we really don't know for sure. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter anyway. Um, it's closely related to hypnosis too, meditation. We'll get into that. There's a type of meditation music called binaural beats. Has anyone ever heard of that? Binaural beats. Basically what that is then is a binaural, binaural beats. There's usually no speaking. Sometimes there is, but it'll play a certain frequency in one stereo channel and a different frequency in the other stereo channel. And if this plays at 100 hertz and this plays at 120 hertz, the difference is 10 hertz. So you'll hear a whoa, 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 and it, it'll cycle at 10 hertz, which is the difference between the two. So it artificially creates a third channel with that whoa, whoa, whoa. And you can program that with words or thoughts. And they're like the subliminal messages when they talk to you. It's inside that third channel. Just by manipulating the left and the right, they can create a false third. And it's good. And different frequencies will produce different results. Don't meditate when you're driving. Why not? Isn't that cruise control? <laughs> it can be. Don't meditate when you're using heavy machinery or explosives or weapons. Um, Check the manual for the cars, and if it's not written, don't meditate while you're driving. So you crash it. And you crash it, you can have a lot of money. Yeah. That's what the old couple did with their RV. Yeah. I was just going to say that story. The lady put the RV in and cruise went control and went to make sandwiches. Coffee, those sandwiches. Yeah. Crashed. And <laughs> the company said, well, it didn't say in the manual that it, it wasn't. You couldn't you walk away. Right? Yeah. They want a huge settlement. Like, and there's the biggest settlement yeah. in the last 20 years. It's crazy. You really can't account for people's stupidity when you make a name. Well, you have to think anytime you see a product and it says don't do this and it's obvious, that means someone did it. Usually. Usually. Okay, I see here it says some people will say an hour or two per day you can meditate. That's a bit much. You don't have two hours a day to meditate, but. But I do know a story of a Buddhist monk in Japan who went up in the mountains to meditate. Now this could be folklore because you know how it is. It, sometimes it gets distorted from truth. But he went up to meditate and he woke up nine years later. So he meditated for nine years straight and his legs had rotted off from sitting like this because it cut off the circulation. And he slowed his metabolism so much that he was able to stay alive for nine years. Just say, I don't know. But you know that monk that they found is encased in, it's pretty recent. He was encased in like uh, some metal, I think. Or he was mummified, a mummified monk. Well, they put him through x-ray machines and MRI machines and they think he might still be alive. Still meditating. 